Dr. Ostrovsky, thank you very much for uh, your insights on the uh, Russian media. Um, our first question is, who were the people who came out in the streets after the Pussy Riot incident? Well, the people who came out in the streets after the Pussy Riot incident were the same people who were out in the streets uh, after the uh, 2011 parliamentary elections and then presidential elections, which they found were rigged, uh, and they were uh, upset and indignant about the way the state treated them. These were the Russian middle class. Um, these were people uh, of uh, fairly high income, uh, but most importantly, higher education. What brought them together is, you know, the, the, the common factor was a education, and secondly, uh, their sense of uh, injustice uh, and offence they've suffered from the state, the way the state treated them as imbeciles. And how does uh, the Kremlin's projected nationalism and anti-Americanism worry Russian elites? And how can the protesters use that? The, the reason anti-Americanism uh, worries Russian elites is that it's gone beyond rhetoric. Uh, there's been recent developments, uh, including the introduction of the Magnitsky list, uh, an act of Congress where certain Russian officials are blacklist, blacklisted uh, and uh, banned from entering the United States and, and their assets must be frozen. Now, these are not necessarily individuals who have any property or assets in the United States, but it's a sign that, the, the, that America is willing to, uh, to act. And this list could be, you know, names could be added to that. It also affecting uh, countries which are part, you know, members of the European Union and, and the Schengen zone. Now, the reason this is very important is that the Russian elite has always kept its assets, uh, its houses, uh, and thought of their prospective lives, or certainly the lives of their children in Europe. Uh, this, uh, the tension uh, that has arisen from uh, anti-Americanism um, and nationalism is cutting their uh, exit strategy, is, is spoiling their exit strategy. And the anti-Americanism is now affecting, and nationalism is affecting, the real relationship between Russia and the United States, and also between Russia and Europe. How politically relevant is the Moscow creative class, given its small size? Well, the people they represent are relevant. The people who initially came out in protest, the middle class uh, itself, uh, the people with education and money, uh, because they're the most advanced uh, part of the Russian society. The creative class itself, uh, is also relevant because they have access to the media, they're much better at uh, uh, formulating the message and creating a narrative, so they are important in that respect. Um, they shouldn't be exaggerated because, as I say, the, the numbers are small and these people have grown in the folds, if you like, of authoritarian oil-rich state. Whether they can, and this is a, there is a symbiosis between the state and this creative class, whether they can actually be independent of the state, if the state falls, that is, is, is the big question. I would say they're more important in what they can potentially provoke uh, rather than in themselves and their own numbers. I mean, they might become history, they might become buried under the ruin of what they're trying to bring down. But as a catalyst, they're important as a catalyst, not as a force, uh, a real social force in, in, in Russian society.